This is what a 20 watt OhmTech MOPA fiber laser can do and much more. Let's dive into the possibilities, the pros, the cons, and where I plan to take this machine next. Hey there YouTube, my name's Alex, the geek of all trades. About a month ago, OhmTech sent me this laser engraver or laser marking machine. You can watch that unboxing and setup video up here or here. I'll leave a link down there. Since receiving this laser, I've done some test markings, engravings, printing on many different surfaces. I've had a diode laser in the past. In fact, I still have one. I've had a CO2 laser in the past, which I wish I still had, but I sold because it was big and in the way and I wasn't really using it. But either way, this is my first fiber laser, so it can start marking things that none of my other lasers could. Kind of hard to see. There we go. This is a pretty good one. Money clips. Maybe some of these credit card sized wallets like this, like this container that I got that is sealed. So it's like smell proof and well, you get the idea. Really, I wanna focus this video's review on the hardware as much as I can. You can't really talk about a machine like this only on the hardware without touching on the software that makes it work with the Lightburn application, which is the software that I use with this, is a beast in itself. There's so many different settings. It has its own learning curve with it. And I really don't want to focus too much on that right now. I still have a lot to learn. So first off, let's look at the laser itself. So this is a pretty neat little machine because it's all self-contained. I looked into getting fiber lasers in the past and they needed a separate control box almost where all the stuff lived, where all the electronics, the power supply, the fiber source or the laser source, everything lived in this like separate box. And as I showed in the unboxing video, it's got this big long cable that goes from the base to the head of the laser, which includes the fiber part, which translates the laser or sends the laser signal through fiber optics to the Galvo head mirrors to point down and shoot on your thing. It is a 20 watt laser and they have much bigger, but also much smaller lasers out there. It can mark it up to 10,000 millimeters a second, which is is ridiculously fast. The marking area is 150 mil by 150 mil. So about six inch square. As I mentioned, I'm using Lightburn. This actually comes with a different application called EasyCAD. I haven't used EasyCAD. I never installed it. Videos I saw, and as I understand it, it's kind of a dumbed down version and like basic entry level to controlling lasers like this. This is a MOPA laser. Omtech makes non-MOPA fiber lasers as well. What's the difference between a MOPA and a non-MOPA laser. Essentially what it comes down to is the MOPA laser enables more control over coloring and engraving with more precision or precise controls over the depth and the surface effects. Also, this laser is very versatile in the different materials that you can mark on. So with this, we're able to mark things like aluminum, brass, gold, silver, steel, stone, including granite or marble, titanium, and tungsten. So a few things that I really like about the hardware about this laser itself is its compact size. Like I mentioned before, it's all in one right now. Instead of having a separate control box and then the laser head itself as like a separate tower that helps with my setup, it is pretty much plug and play for the most part. We can get into that a little bit later too. It has a huge strong community support. So when you run into errors or you're trying to figure this out or what settings do I need to use here, Facebook groups, Reddit posts, and all kinds of community out there that's playing with these machines professionally are more than happy to help walk you through some of the issues. In addition to dedicated support from OhmTech, I like having the versatility of being able to mark on many different things like this. So these dice are plastic, but then so are these name tags. My name's Yev. So these little things were here when I bought the house. There's a lot of tools and stuff left over here when we bought the house. And this was just a rusty stamp. Well, these were really, really rusty and you can see some lines there. And I'll show the video about now. I essentially did a, a cleaning sweep on this one specifically to get some of the rust off of there, see how it would. And I think I, you know, there's definitely some fine tuning that needs done here. Metal business cards. Of course, this is kind of like a rite of passage for any laser engraving, 
enthusiast. You make these business cards that then you hand out at these uh, events or whatever. By the way, if you scan that, that goes to my YouTube channel here. Most of these that I've shown so far, I take an image, drop it into Lightburn and trace the image and then modify the tracing of the image to fine tune it. And then I get rid of the original image and all I have left over is the trace. From there, you can ungroup it and move things around or group it and create this a fill and that a fill and these all lines duplicate it and create more lines with different fills and different effects or you could just straight take the image and drop it in there depending on the type of image and it can engrave specifically uh, this was an image and you can see there's different settings that uh, are used for these and the different settings produce different results some look a lot better than others, but there's a whole bunch of these. So many different settings, so many different options. For example, I got these leather patches that are just a, a basic leather patch that you apply heat to and put it on like a hat. Did a couple of these and they came out really, really well. If you're gonna get into laser engraving at all, using just about any machine, I would recommend checking out lasereverything.net. They also have a YouTube channel and they talk about everything lasers including Lightburn and a lot of the settings. What really helped me, they have on their website, a pack of settings essentially that are predefined for different materials for a couple of different types of lasers. You can import that directly into Lightburn and it's a great starting point. A few of the things I don't like about this machine though are the size of the build plate. And I know that's the limitation of the Galvo laser essentially, because it can only go so far. Your laser lens is only so big and that's on this machine. So this is a 110 by 110 millimeter lens. Another piece I don't really like about this is the manual crank for height adjustment. Now it comes with this big long ruler set up against it and crank the crank down to where the laser adjustment needs to be. And I do like that it's got a big picture on the side that says the measurements it needs to be at for optimal focal point. Plus it has two red laser dots, just, just dots, point down, and that can help you fine tune where that optimal laser point should be. Words are hard. And then another thing I, I don't really like so far about this laser specifically, in light burn, the dimensions are off. Now this absolutely could be because of the way I set it up. When I hit find my laser within light burn, it didn't find the exact laser. I had to go in and adjust things, pick a JPT laser that had closest dimensions, and I guess I filled out the rest. Uh, it's been a month or so since I did that, so uh, a little foggy. If I measure a 10 mil by 10 mil square on light burn, and then I hit preview on the build plate, it's 18 by 18. So somewhere the math ain't mathin'. Not a diss on this laser, but a dislike in the experience so far. Speaking of light burn, like I said, I don't wanna get too deep into the application side because I think that's a whole different video or series of videos. By the way, this might be a good time to say that if you've made it this far in the video and you learned something today, to hit that thumbs up button, it really helps the channel. And also, if this is the kind of video that you like to watch, leave a comment down below and let me know. Light burn is the the application I'm using for this. It comes with EasyCAD out of the box. It's got a USB stick that has EasyCAD installation files on it. But when you're buying this for like a hundred bucks more, you get Lightburn. Just spend the extra hundred bucks. A 99 cent serving tray of some kind at Goodwill is a lot cheaper than metal stock at Home Depot or Lowe's. Goodwill, they're just happy to get the shit off their shelves. So what am I gonna do with this thing? I got this awesome machine and I already have an Etsy store that I sell my 3D printed stuff on. So it would make sense to laser engrave and sell stuff on Etsy in the same store, right? Should I create a new store? Should I offer custom options? There's a lot to think about there. Just like 3D printing, it's print on demand. So what are some of the cool things that I want to learn to engrave on? maybe like a pizza cutter. This is awesome, actually. I found this at Goodwill for like $2. And it's an old butcher's knife that is stainless steel and it has a wooden handle. And I think it would be fantastic to make almost like an ASMR video, taking this apart, completely refinishing it, doing laser clean sweeps on it, and then engraving designs on it. I think that'd be awesome. So that's something I wanna do. I'm stealing this idea because I saw another YouTuber doing it, but throwing axes would be really cool to make custom designs for these matching throwing X things. And they're completely stainless steel all the way through. They don't have 
any kind of handles on them, like grips on the handles. So maybe I can make some of those too. I think one of the things I'm most excited about learning to work on is firearms. So I could make a custom slide for different types of Glocks. I can make different stippling that goes on the handles. Glock 17s are pretty bland. Definitely put a custom twist on it. The slides themselves are not considered firearms. So that's something that I could sell on, uh, on the store or sell as a service. Customers can send me just the slide, keep the rest of the pistol, you know, take the slide off and send it to me and I could totally engrave all over it once I figure out how to do it and make it look good. You pretty much get one shot at that. And also you'll see in the videos where my machine is located currently is on my main workbench in the workshop. So I'm gonna be moving it to the other side of my workshop to get it on a more level and even work surface. Some tips that I could have for you already for laser engraving with this machine, really with any machine, but in general, is test your materials before starting a project. I All of this stuff I got for cheap or free to test with. I'm running around the house looking for things I can engrave on and documenting your outcomes. This might be a better example. With some of these test grids, it's easy to see that this frequency and this speed, this is my outcome. When you're marking something on this, if you don't save the file, you can't really go back and see what settings you use to make this, to change things up. And so good documentation is always necessary. And I haven't figured out a good way to do that yet. A lot of this is trial and error for me so far. So wrapping this up, I think this laser is going to be a game changer for me, for my workshop. And I'm just getting started. So definitely stay tuned for more videos about this and as I create and learn more about it as well I'll bring it to you too creating custom projects and learning along the way if you're interested in picking up this laser link will be down in the description as well as a promo code that'll save you a little bit upon purchase and as always thanks for watching